We've got a quick 17 sections to put up with two gates and we're gonna see how fast we can get this done and just show you how crazy fast this system is and how crazy strong it is. So yeah, if we got a level. You got off the truck without a level? I did. Play? I know. Play? I, I... So I'm just gonna sight this off that wall and we're pretty good right there. So now we're just gonna drive it. Go ahead. How much fill are you wanting to bring in here? I figure we'll probably at least have to do that much. So, I mean, we can't really keep it, we can keep it flat. Uh -huh. Keeping it level would mean we'd have to be up here even higher. I know, I know you're gonna have You're to just trying to eliminate some of that slope. Uh, we'll be able to show you that here in just a second. I mean, I'm guessing that somewhere right in here is gonna be about where we're at. Yeah, and we'll show it to you before we actually set okay. the fence height. The nice thing about the way we do this is that we can make adjustments after the fact, not a big deal at all. Oh, okay, so. sounds good. There's the concrete, we found it. There's three places that we might have to do this. Anywhere where we've got concrete interfering with our posts, we may have to expose a little bit of a hole, dig down and take care of those problems. But the good thing is, most of these don't have much concrete. We should be able to bust through this real quick and then send dry beam straight through it. Okay, that little dab of concrete's gone. That was it. We're gonna leave this in high, a little more. Because we're trying to get up over this and still keep the whole fence flat, so. So now that we've got our corner posts all set, we'll set up a string and we'll drive all the rest of these posts right to the string line. The customer wants this fence to be flat across the back end of the yard. So we've got to roll off here really bad and we've got to roll off down there really bad. So what we're gonna try and do is make it so it's nice and flat all the way across the backyard and that makes it really easy with these posts. Normally on aluminum fence, we have maybe two feet in the ground. And so if a customer came to us and said, hey, I want it to be flat and we had to have a post a foot out of the ground, that would be a huge problem. But because we've got four feet of post to play with, we're still three feet in the ground, even though we're foot out and we've got no problems whatsoever. The customer can come in later and fill that off and we haven't compromised the integrity of the fence whatsoever, so. You know, Brian's gonna pull from his side right now. Is that better? You like that? That's where we clear. Now we're just barely clearing this whole entire yard. Let's get our customer to say this is great or this is not great and we'll go from there. What's he say? To kind of flatten this whole thing out, this is about where we would be. Okay. Two inches below this would be the bottom of your fence panels okay. because that's what we have to do to get it flat and keep it all the way across there. This is our high point right here that we're trying to miss. So you can see down here, we'd be about two inches above the ground and then it dives off real bad again on this end. Clear up here would be where your 48 inch tall fence would be. Are you wanting to kind of blend it in? Cause we can roll the fence. That's not a problem. We do that all the time. It'll just basically arc to the contour of the ground and then you won't have any gaps. A beautifully rolled fence, but one that's artfully done looks really good. So much better. You know, we get, we get a lot of people that really think they want a flat fence until they see what it's gonna look like and how big of the gap is gonna be. And they're like, okay, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot, it was a lot. You know, that's why it's good to show people is because they're like, well, that's what I want. And then you show them, okay, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Some of the reasons that we use this, or the biggest reason for us is, number one, it makes things very strong. We're adding extra strength inside the post. And then the biggest part is, is that we're not tearing people's yards up. And the dirty little secret of the fence industry is nobody hauls off their dirt. So they're gonna scatter it in your lawn and you're gonna have all this dirt in your lawn for two, three weeks or whatever. And it just, then you get rain and stuff and then you get all this mud there and we're just, no. The least we can disturb the yard, the better when we're doing this, especially if we can keep the strength and integrity of the fence, so. Well, yeah. It's good. Hang on, make sure you're off the string. Don't push that string over. Get up here about 3 16ths. Just keep that the whole way down. We'll be good. Thank you. Perfect. I have an idea. I might just have an idea. 
If we stick the post right here, this section will be a foot shorter, but we'll not have this whole root mess to deal with, hopefully. So we can maybe drive our I-beam right here and still keep a full section. So let's try that before we get carried away, chopping a whole bunch out of a nice live oak tree. Okay, let's talk about this. So we are here at the base of a huge live oak tree. We're two feet in the ground. The posts are solid, solid. We're probably between a whole root ball. The posts can't pull out. And chances are, if we started cutting through roots, we'd find more roots down below it and we'd just sacrifice the tree. The juice isn't worth the squeeze, so we're not going to fight to get another couple feet when the what we've already got is super solid. We are not having any problem. I could bend this I-beam and the ground wouldn't give way and the post wouldn't fall over. We'd just flat bend the I-beam over. So we're gonna leave it right here, trim the top off and let it be because it just isn't worth damaging the tree to get that extra bit. Ta-da! Okay. I was today years old when I knew that that thing lived right there. When I learned that that thing lived there, I had no idea. I just would have gone to my truck, got the wrench, and moved on. I feel so stupid. Oh, I feel so stupid. It's kind of like when you're chucking a drill, you're supposed to tighten it down all the way and then back it off one click, and that locks the bit in there. Wait, what? I didn't know that until like eight months ago. This is crazy stuff. Does your bit stay better now that you, do you do it? Yes, it works. 100% works. Do you know what I'm talking about? Never heard that. But you have to tighten it and then back it off one click no. and it locks it in there. I've never seen that. Dead serious. This is real life you stuff. Ah! What's he doing? What are you doing, Brian? Cutting off your, your post. Oh. You know, if you're an aluminum manufacturer and you're thinking, hey, I want to get involved in this, what we would really like is we would like posts that are six inches longer than the panel height. That would be good. Then we could save even more money because all we're doing is we're chopping all this money off and we're throwing it away. So if you're an aluminum manufacturer, get with me. We'd like to have you make posts for us that are shorter. Right here. What do you got? It's a metal, baby. Tell me, look at it. It's watching out. It's some... Probably got a scratch on your eyeball now, though. Ooh. Hey, remember what I said about eyeglasses? Ow! My eye! Yeah. Where's my protection? Hey, Clay, you got some eye protection? I do. I was driving the Pope. <laughs> it don't matter. A little teeny tiny flake is all it takes <laughs> of that crap. Yeah, cut those things a little farther away. Yeah, I'll, I'll get away from you. <laughs> Let's make sure we're wearing eyeglasses too. Yeah, good. You know, ain't nothing like that keep me down. Just a little, just, just a little bit. No, I'll be okay. I was down here. I was leveling it out, almost to the string. Brian's cutting the aluminum rail with that saw. So just from him being four feet over there, that came out and hit me in the eye. So eye protection, gotta have it, gotta have it. Drive it. Yeah. Let's just do the tops all the way down first. That way we can adjust the height. If we do the bottoms now, then we can't adjust height. So here in just a second, you'll see the roll. We'll be able to, we'll trim these panels and we'll let you see how it's gonna roll. So we need to measure this one. It should end up being like two pickets we cut off of this one to miss those roots. Very carefully, because those are sharp and we don't want to scratch up our posts. So if you'll notice Brian when he's cutting, he's setting the saw down on top of the cut rather than sliding it through. And the reason that we do that is because it'll pick up little shavings of aluminum and scratch the heck out of whatever's underneath the, 
The shoe, the shoe. That's what I was gonna go with, the shoe. So he's just lowering it down on there to cut all the way through it rather than lowering it all the way and then sliding it. We're just trying to prevent damage to the material. Then we jockey this one in this end. Bam, he puts a screw in it. Brian, do you even know what you're doing? This looks like trash. I'm gonna request that you wait until we're finished. But I don't like the way it looks now. So when we have people that are like that, we give them tennis balls and tell them, give them tennis balls. <laughs> you have to sit over here until we're done and then you can talk. I have to wait. We're just gonna leave it like this. I can be okay. Why are, you, why are you laughing? This looks pretty good for you, doesn't it? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> no, we're, we'll adjust the height in a second, but that is another beautiful part of this is that we don't have to worry about that right now. We can worry about that later. It'll screw into the I-beams so that when it's all done and all these screws run into the I-beams, you can't pull it up, you can't pull it down, you can't do anything, and it'll lock it all into place. So we put the top screw in because it's above the I-beam, and then these other two will go into the I-beam. We're very high right now, but we'll take a hammer, we'll tap all these down just a little bit and blend it all out and then we'll just roll it and it'll look really good. Yeah. We just don't worry about adjusting our height just yet. Yeah. That's good. I'm about to run into that one. I have to cut a little off out in there. The first thing we do whenever we get ready to put a gate in, this is what I tell everybody, before you even think about setting a gate post, we want to know how far apart to set them so that we've got the right dimension. We see that that's going to take up a half an inch, right? So half inch on your hinge side. So let's say I want my gate to look about like that. So now I can measure this and I'm coming up with about three quarters of an inch. So, so if we do an inch and a half and we add that to whatever a gate frame measures, that will be our distance from inside a post to inside a post. Okay. Always double check that because there's nothing worse than getting your gate post set and finding out your gate doesn't fit. That's the gate post. Okay, now I'll plumb her up. Okay, you can go away a quarter. Okay, you're dead on. Now line it up with the string. There. Yeah, you're good. Send it. Look at this little bitty pencil Mark gave me. It works! Send it, buddy. So better to drive it down than have to pull it up. You know, if we need to drive it down a little bit, we'll give it a little hammer. Uh -huh. Yep. Your line's pretty good, like right there, and we're, uh... It's a little short. Don't worry. We brought some extra. Luckily, there was two in a box. And we only needed one. That was close. Hey, so can you see? Can you see kind of what's happening here without a whole lot of work? We've actually established a line that the customer wanted. And then I see that this post is a little out. And this one's a little out. I don't know if this is tough. Can you do this with your fence? Some of your videos pics or it didn't happen. How about that? I bet you'll snap yours right off. Yep, we're good. So I'm gonna be right there. Ooh, sprinkler pipe. Let's stay off that. Oh, hey, welcome back. So what we're doing here is we're just digging down so that we can get underneath the eaves with our pounder because there's not enough room to get the pounder on. So if we dig down just a little bit, boom, room for the pounder. And luckily, we just avoided all the sprinkler pipes and the sprinkler wire. There we go. Go ahead and hit us a little bit. Give us a couple bumps. Oh, that's the foundation. Go ahead. Is it going? No, it's hitting concrete. Okay. All right, pop it off. Yep, that'd be a foundation. Buried, buried treasure. The Coke can from 1996. Christmas bear on it and everything.
Uh oh. Fixed it. <laughs> well, then you're gonna need the post that you're at and you see it down a little bit. Okay. Oh. You're in it now. Should we, should we get him to say, hey, this looks great before we put all the screws in? Yeah, he's gonna love it. Go get him. Ah, he's gonna love it. All right, this is what we got. You gotta make sure you like it. I don't. What? Hey, hey, that's not funny. Don't do that. Don't do that to me. Looks really good. That's kind of what you're after. So we got a flat all the way up to the tree and then we just roll it it's off and tie it in. Whoa, who'd have thought? Is that gonna work for you? So this will be this will be your fill, and then we'll just go straight from here right up to your uh, okay. screened-in porch. I like it. So yeah, no, I, before I, we I, screw it all off and get it set to height, and we just want to make sure it's good with you. So yeah, <laughs> we did trim a couple pickets right down there at that root just to oh, okay. drop okay. it a little bit lower. And then we don't have to cut into that root at all. Trim that right there. That looks good. Yeah, especially yeah. I'm glad that we. Yeah, it would have looked kind of weird having it taller there, and your neighbor might not have appreciated it quite yeah. so much. Yeah. I think it would have drove you nuts over time. But sounds good. Looks good. Happy customers. That's what we want. Oh yeah, we will be. <laughs> Push my way. Now, I don't know many people that think this looks amazing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna rack this gate, even though it's already solid welded aluminum. Just so you're aware, we've got about three inches here. That's probably pretty close to the maximum I want to try because if you do try to rack these much more than that, you could risk breaking welds, bending pickets, and what you'll see is you'll get an arch in this top rail a little bit. So we have a little bit of forgiveness, but not a ton. I think we should be able to get this out of it and show you how to do a three inch rack. So this looks pretty good right here, but we gotta go past because what we're gonna have happen is it'll spring. And boom, just like that, we have a rack to gate. And now you can see clearly why we hang off the low post because it starts off closer here and as we open, it gets further away since the ground slopes this way. Had we hinged it on that side, we could run the risk of hitting the ground trying to swing it this way, so. Okay, I like it. You guys like it? Okay. My work here is done. I'm done, my work here is done. So hopefully you've enjoyed watching us install this no dig aluminum fence. Hopefully you've learned a little bit about why we use no dig aluminum fence. Why we like no dig in general because of the no dig wood fence that we do, the no dig vinyl fence we do, and now the no dig aluminum fence. This is the last fence that we weren't able to install without digging holes. And now we've got the system to be able to do that. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about no-dig vinyl, check this video out up here. If you want to learn about no-dig cedar and how we install Postmasters without digging and why we use Postmasters, check out this video over here. I'm Mark Olson with SWI Fence. We are Florida's fence company. And until next time, you have a good dang day.